Hi, welcome to the Motion Picture Notion. I'm your host, Gabriel Burton. So this is like my, and this is not an exaggeration, this has got to be my seventh attempt at doing a final video for the season. This year has just been the absolute worst. I really wanted to do the last video in my studio, as it were, but unfortunately it's now become my wife's office. It's really put like a chokehold on like what I can or can't do at any given time. So I'm doing this last episode at my office. Currently, I am watching the new Twilight Zone, the one that's produced by Jordan Peele, and I have to be honest with you, I don't, surprisingly, hate it as much as other people seem to. It is very political, yes, and uh, politics being shoehorned into everything has really pissed me off. It's not even so much politics, it's politics being dumped down your throat with, like, no allegory, no subtlety, no good storytelling, no good character development. Surprisingly enough, even though uh, the new Twilight Zone does deal with a lot of political issues that, uh, or not even a lot, but some political issues that I myself would even disagree with, the execution is a lot better. I mean, at certain points it gets a little heavy-handed. Granted, I'm not done with the season yet. I've seen the first seven episodes, so there's still three for it to go horribly, horribly, horribly awry. I figured I'd give it a shot because I saw Us, and I think that Jordan Peele is a really creative dude with a lot of really original ideas. Uh, I like how it takes a lot of old episodes and kind of flips them on their head. But the funny thing is, I am the first person to rip apart, like, woke culture and stuff like that on my channel. And here I am over here liking this new Twilight Zone. But, oh my god. IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes everywhere people and i'm not talking about the critics okay i'm not talking about like the quote-unquote professional critics i'm talking about fans i'm talking about just regular average joes and janes hate this show and the message of a big part of it really seems to be clear they're just sick of it even people who are more on the liberal side of things nobody gives a shit and it really is a movement i feel in our culture it's a shift and I did say, I mean, I, I said a few things at the beginning of this year, one of which was I thought that it would be a good year. Joke's on me. It may not be a good year, but I feel, at least as far as film is concerned, it was a very necessary year. I, I've gone over this, that like at the change of every decade, it's not like you're just automatically going to get into something new. There's going to be some like carry-on from the previous decade. And, you know, this last decade got really, really, really woke and really, really, really divisive. And now we're into a new decade and people are just like, get some new material. When Jimmy Kimmel hosts the Oscars, look at the comments down below. It's ridiculous. Each and every single one of them, they say the exact same thing. And then you see things like, you know, Dave Chappelle's Sticks and Stones, which will get like a, you know, 3% on Rotten Tomatoes, but it's like a 98% audience view. And the thing is, that's where the money is. There's a lot of name calling right now, and people don't want to be attributed to that, and some people are actually targeted for expressing certain opinions, you know, in the public eye. But I feel like that's going to change, gradually, gradually. But you see a few things here and there, like this year's The Hunt, you know, coming out. That ruffled a lot of feathers, and honestly, I think it was one of the best movies of 2020. It's unfortunate that you have certain things that kind of get it's like collateral damage, really. You know, they get caught in the crossfire, like Captain Marvel, for example. People just don't like Brie Larson. I mean, even the other Avengers cast don't really like her because she's, you know, she, I mean, my interpretation from what I can see, she just comes across like a feminazi. But similarly with the Twilight Zone, you know, it's like here you have a lot of like kind of really well integrated, I would say, political messages that don't insult your intelligence. Again, clearly not a popular opinion. That's just how I feel right now. Maybe I need to watch it a few more times. Maybe I need to watch it through to the end. But again, you, you read these reviews and, and you see the trajectory. You see the way society is going. And I would hope that going forward, future directors will kind of look at the work that Jordan Peele does and be like, this is how you tell a story. Because at the end of the day, that's the biggest sin for me. It's not, you know, putting your politics into it. I mean, yeah, sometimes it's like, shut up, I didn't come here for this. But... But what, it, what really is bothersome about it is the infantile way that they shove it down your throat. It, 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 it sacrifices a good narrative. It sacrifices good storytelling to scream in your face an angry political message. I've mentioned this several times before, but, you know, Terminator Dark Fate, Terminator Dark Fate, and, and you're talking a movie that featured Linda Hamilton back in the 80s, in the 80s, guys. 
A movie that was geared towards dudes and they watched this tough chick crush a Terminator in a hydraulic press. Terminator 2 even more so because in that one she was battle ready. She was a woman of action. She, she knew what was going to happen. She's like, I got to protect my son. I got to stop this future from happening. I'm going in. She was a tough woman. And they just screwed it up with all this like shoehorned political bullshit. And such a, such a classic, strong-willed female character. Change is coming, and I think, you know, it's going to be a rocky next couple of years, but I think gradually you're going to see more people kind of do some, you know, uh, some uh, <laughs> ruffling of feathers, and uh, I, I really look forward to that. I really do. I, I'm really looking forward to this shift, because I think that we're going to get back to, you know, really good storytelling sometime soon. I've been wrong before, but, you know, I'm trying to be an optimist here. I mean, look at the year we just had. At any rate, guys, uh, 2020 was a crappy year. Uh, there might be an even further hiatus with my show for next year because I want to get a better camera. I also want to kind of rearrange my studio a little bit, make it look a little better, fix the lighting, etc. And, you know, maybe this next year my wife will go back to work at her office, so I will have a little bit more time to film there. I love her, but, you know, I, I want to... I want an hour a day to at least film my videos. At any rate, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, hope you're. Uh, ho hope you had a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Kwanzaa, um, and I will see you next year. And that's all she wrote.